Hello everyone! Our topic this time is bacterial transformation, conjugation, and transduction. Bacterial cell reproduces by simply replicating its chromosome and dividing into two daughter cells. This is called binary fission. These two daughter cells are identical with each other and identical to the parent cell. Thus, over time, a sexual reproduction can result to a population of hundreds of thousands of bacterial cells, uh, all of which are genetically identical to a lone parent cell. Given their asexual mode of reproduction, we may think that bacteria are boring and lacking in genetic variability. But this is not true. This is not the case. Prokaryotic cells have developed a number of methods of recombining their genetic material, which in turn contributes to their genetic variability. But how do bacteria get the genetic variability that they need? They might need a gene that uh, they would need to break an unusual nutrient source or degrade an antibiotic threatening to destroy them. Acquiring the gene would mean a difference between life and death. But where would these genes come from and how would the bacteria get hold of them? The processes that bacteria use to acquire new genes uh, are actually mechanisms known as horizontal gene transfer, HGT. The three most common HGT are transformation, conjugation, and transduction. However, not all types of cells or bacterial cells are capable of engaging in these processes. So let's take a look first at transformation. The process of transformation allows a bacterial cell to acquire new genes, but it does not require cell-to-cell -cell contact. Typically, the process requires a donor cell and at some point lies and release naked DNA to the environment. The recipient cell is the one that is capable of taking up the DNA from the environment and incorporating it into its own genome where the cell is described as being competent. So DNA was uh, proven as the genetic material by the first demonstration of bacterial transformation in the experiment that was conducted by Frederick Griffith in London in 1928. Frederick Griffith found that there were two different types of bacterium uh, Streptococcus pneumoniae. One is a smooth strain which is lethal to mice. Poor little mousey. It died after being injected by the smooth strain. Another strain is rough or the one that does not hurt the mouse. In other words, this is non-pathogenic and the smooth strain is pathogenic strain. Frederick Griffith found that he could hit and activate the smooth strain. So here, the smooth strain was subjected into heat before it was injected to the mouse. And so the mouse did not die. Good for the mouse. No? And however, if the heat inactivated S strain was mixed with a live R strain and injected to the mouse, the mouse died. Oh, poor little mousey. Now, here, this means that there was some material that the heat uh, killed S strain uh, left in the environment and responsible for transforming the rough strain into a uh, lethal one. So transformation is simply the process where bacteria manage to uptake or bring in a piece of external DNA. And usually this process is used in the laboratory to introduce a small piece of plasmid DNA into bacterial cell. Let's take a look at this example. In this example, we have a tetracycline resistance plasmid. 
and this is coming from tetracycline resistant cell uh, via different processes in the laboratory such as DNA extraction, centrifugation, fractionation, etc. This tetracycline resistance plasmid was introduced into the tetracycline sensitive cell or tetracycline uh, not resistant cell. And this was incorporated into the cell, making this cell uh, transform into a tetracycline resistant plasmid. Now, let's go into conjugation. Conjugation is another process of horizontal gene transfer. In here, conjugation is the process in which DNA is transferred from a bacterial donor cell to a recipient cell by cell-to-cell -cell contact. It has been observed in many bacterial species and it is best understood in Escherichia coli. So here is a picture of or an electron micrograph of two E. coli undergoing conjugation. The F plus cell to the right is covered with small pili and fimbrae and a sex pilus uh, that is needed to transfer genetic material from one cell to another. This one. No. Okay. And now let's take a closer look at the process of Conjugation. Here is an example of conjugation. Antibiotic resistance genes may be carried on a plasmid and transferred from a donor cell to the recipient cell via cell to cell contact through sex pilus bridge. Both cells now carry the plasmid with resistance genes. The ability to transfer DNA by conjugation is dependent on the presence of a plasmid term is fertility factor or F plus mean. The cells carrying F are termed F plus cells without F are F minus cells. F plus can synthesize sex pilus for cell to cell contact. Plus need can be transferred from an F plus to an F minus cell via a bridge that is formed and transfer can start when a single strand plus need is transferred into the recipient. DNA replication in both the donor and recipient replaces the missing strand. So all you have to remember in this is that transfer can only happen between an F plus and F minus. It cannot be between F plus and F plus or F minus to an F minus. So it's only between F plus to F minus. Now let's go into transduction. So transduction is the transfer of bacterial genes by virus. So in here, there is a vector or a carrier. Bacterial genes are incorporated into a fudge capsid because of errors made during the virus life cycle. The virus containing the genes that injects them into another bacterium um, completing the transfer. So transduction is maybe the most common mechanism for gene exchange and recombination in bacteria. So transduction can be of two types, the generalized transduction and the specialized transduction. So the General transduction or generalized transduction occurs during the lytic cycle of the virulent and temperate fudges and can transfer any part, any part, that means there is no selective transfer, any part of the bacterial genome and recombination occurs between genetic materials from two cells without selective transfer. And the specialized transduction uh, here, transducing particles carry only specific portion of a bacterial genome and selective transfer occurs. So the difference between the two is that in generalized transdu transduction, there is no selective transfer. In specialized, there is. Now let's take a look at the generalized transduction. So this is an overview of what happens in the generalized transduction. 
So first, a fudge infects the donor bacterial cell. Next, fudge DNA and proteins are made and the bacterial chromosome is broken down. Occasionally, during fudge assembly, pieces of bacterial DNA are packed in a fudge capsid. Then, the donor cell lyses and releases fudge particles containing bacterial DNA. A fudge carrying bacterial DNA infects a new host cell, the recipient cell. Recombination occurs, producing a recombinant cell with a genotype different from both the donor and the recipient cell. So this is generalized transduction. What about specialized transduction? So this one occurs at a specific site on the bacterial chromosome. This relationship between a fudge and its bacterial host is called lysogeny. The integrated fudge DNA, termed as the profudge, can remain in the host genome through many generations. Under certain environmental conditions, the integrated fudge DNA can excise and go on to a lytic infection. In most cases, the excision of the fudge DNA from the chromosome is exact. However, rarely there is faulty excision and some of the bacterial chromosomal genes, those located next to the integration site of the fudge DNA, can be excised along with the fudge DNA, uh, similar to the formation of the F prime factors. Here, the small amount of bacterial DNA associated with the fudge DNA is replicated and packed into the fudge heads. These transducing particles can infect other bacteria and the injected DNA can recombine into the chrom chromosome resulting in an altered genotype. So, because only bacterial genes located next to the integration site of the fudge DNA are transferred, which, which means that was really intended, this process is called specialized transduction, meaning there was selective transfer. Transduction is important for several reasons. One, it is a tool used by researchers to purposely exchange genetic material among related bacterial strains. Two, the phenomenon is of medical importance as well since fudge genomes present in lysogens can code for certain toxins of pathogens. Example, the diphtheria toxin of Carinibacterium diphtheriae and the toxin of E. coli that is causing the bloody diarrhea. Another importance is it can be used to study gene linkage in bacterial genetics. Genes that are located closely together in bacterial chromosome can be co-transduced, such as transferred together. The observation of a profage existing with the bacterial cell for a long Time suggests a similar mechanism that may account for a viral origin of cancer in humans. So, uh, these are my references. And thank you very much for watching. I hope that you got something from this lecture. And if you find this lecture useful, uh, please subscribe and click the button so that you will be. Uh, notified with the new videos uploaded. Thank you very much.